We are back with even more Disney World snacks that you need to know about before your 2024 trip. So get your taste buds ready and your rumbling tummy prepared because these latest Disney additions are sure to make your mouth water. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Vlog. Now I know it wasn't too terribly long ago that we released our video for the best Disney World snacks of 2024, but come on, Disney World has a lot of good snacks spread out across the entire property. So just one snack video to cover all of 2024 was not gonna cut it for us here at DFB Guide, not this time, which is why we've got more snacks coming your way from the new stuff to the classics that have re-entered our hearts to the underrated gems that I cannot believe we haven't talked more about in past videos. Sorry about that. Now, before we get started, keep in mind that some of our 2024 favorite snacks may not be mentioned in this video because we potentially already talked about them in the last snack video. But if you scan the QR code you see on the screen now or head over to DisneyFoodBlog.com slash best snacks, then you can pick up our free digital guide for the top 10 snacks in each Disney World park, which will also come with complimentary park maps that'll help you track down each snack that you want to try. That's right, we have snack maps. I love it. Also, go watch that first video because there's lots of stuff in there that I don't want you to not know about. <laughs> All right, we're going to get started with some brand new stuff in Magic Kingdom. So MK might not have your favorite meal on property, but it could have your favorite new dessert. We've got Bunt Cakes at Main Street Confectionery. That's right, they are on the Bunt Cake bandwagon. Wow, I just made that up. Bria didn't even write that. <laughs> I gotta give myself a pat on the back for Bundt Cake bandwagon. Anyway, Bundt Cakes are all the rage on the Main Street USA scene, just like they're all the rage everywhere else in America. And it's time for you to join the Bundt Cake Club. Over at the Main Street Confectionery, you're gonna find lots of sugary stuff, but the ever-changing Bundt Cake flavors are what's been winning over the DFB reporters lately. In fact, the Bakery Case's recent addition, the Twix Chocolate Caramel Bundt Cake, has taken the top cake tier for us. This is a mini chocolate Bundt Cake with caramel filling, topped with chocolate fudge frosting and chopped Twix. Now, the cake consistency is dense, but moist, just what you want in a Bundt cake, and the flavor itself is sweet without being too overwhelming. The frosting, on the other hand, is a different story because it's very sweet, but in a rich, fudgy sort of way that pairs well with the cake itself, and there's not too much of it. Not that there's ever too much frosting for me. I am a frosting fiend, but not all of our reporters are, and so some of them are concerned if there's too much frosting, so this is a good, happy medium for all of us. I love saying happy medium because it reminds me of my favorite book in the whole wide world, A Wrinkle in Time. I don't know if you guys like that book. If you do, let me know because it's my favorite book. Okay, there isn't a huge Twix presence on top, just a few tiny crumbs, and the cake that we tried seemed to be lacking in the caramel department. But other than that, this is a good option for you chocolate fans out there. Now, as I mentioned before, the flavors in the Main Street Confectionery display case rotate often, so you might find something completely new here during your next visit. But the bun cakes that we've tried so far have had a pretty good track record. So the flavor that you come across could still be a really tasty surprise, whether it be Twix or not. Okay, now where has this next beautiful golden brown pocket of deliciousness been hiding all your life? This one is definitely hiding. A lot of people don't know about it and nobody talks about it. So we, my friends, are very much going to talk about it right now. This is the Caramel Apple Pecan Hand Pie, Caramel Apple Pecan Hand Pie, however you want me to say those words. That's what this is, and it's at Friar's Nook over there in Fantasyland. It's got a nice flaky crust that's filled with apples and pecans and then topped off with caramel sauce. It's like those apple empanadas that you used to be able to get from Taco Bell, but <laughs> with the addition of pecans. Sorry, I'm trying to make this relatable. Now, if you really wanna up your hand pie game, I'd recommend grabbing a basic cup of vanilla soft serve over at Storybook Treats, which is right next door to Friar's Nook, and then you can transform your hand pie, which is served warm, into apple pie a la mode. It's amazing. Okay, I am so excited about this next one because I am still not over the fact that the All-American Sunday was ever not an option over at the Main Street Plaza ice cream parlor. During Disney World's 50th anniversary celebration, it disappeared. I actually didn't see it return after the COVID closures. So the fact that it came back last spring is super exciting because this is one of my favorite Sundays in all of Disney World. The All-American Sunday is back on the menu. And this is comprised of old-fashioned vanilla and chocolate ice cream topped with hot fudge, peanut butter, whipped cream, and a beautiful red cherry. It's basically a No Way Jose from Beaches and Cream, just in a smaller, more accessible version. <laughs> it's simple, but 
delicious. You know I love peanut butter, I love fudge. Peanut butter fudge, even better. And don't forget that if you want a little more topping, you know, to mix in once you get through that top layer of topping goodness, you can always order some extra hot fudge or caramel on the side for 69 cents. I'm not sure if you can order peanut butter on the side again. You used to be able to, so I imagine now that it's back, you should be able to order it again for 69 cents or a snack credit. Not a good use of a snack credit, by the way, it's only 69 cents, but you can usually order extra of the toppings on the side. Now, speaking of extra, if you're looking for a Sunday that's really gonna give you kind of a Disney flair, then you may wanna opt for the Mickey Sink Sunday instead. This comes with your choice of any two flavors of hand scooped ice cream topped with hot fudge or caramel, whipped cream, and two cherries. But the best part about this one, it comes served in that Mickey Sink bowl styled to look like Mickey's pants. Very, very cute. My favorite part is that the little faucets that are Mickey's little hands actually turn. I think that's so fun. They also usually have a mini like dress bowl too, a mini sink bowl too, that we've seen pop up at a couple of the hotels. And sometimes it's here at Plaza Ice Cream Parlor as well. So keep an eye out for that if mini is your preferred character. Now the bowl makes for a nice souvenir once you're done with the ice cream, but keep in mind that you're gonna wanna wash it out in the bathroom to prevent it from getting all sticky and gross while you walk around. And you might get tired of carrying it around with you all day. One of our reporters was getting the mini kitchen sink Sunday when it was brand new on the scene and she didn't have a bag. That was the day that she was testing out going to Disney World without a bag. And so she basically just had a date with her mini kitchen sink all day and took pictures of herself with her mini kitchen sink all day, which is hilarious. That's what I love about our reporters. Is they make the best of whatever they've got and they, they're like, nah, we'll make this fun. They're fantastic. Anyway, make sure you got a big enough bag to carry it in if that's something that you wanna order on your Magic Kingdom day. Now, how about an Epcot snack you've never heard of? Whether it's because these Epcot snacks are being overshadowed by others or because you never thought to actively seek these out before, you're gonna wanna be on the lookout for these frequently overlooked Epcot treats. First, the Squishmallow gummies from the House of Good Fortune. So you might've heard of collecting Squishmallows, but have you ever heard of eating them? Yep, they are super trendy right now. And of course, Epcot is representing. Epcot's World Showcase is home to 11 pavilions representing countries around the world, as you know, Mexico, Germany, Italy, France, China, etc. And while we're out and about here, just walking around and taking in all the sights, we like to head into the House of Good Fortune in the China Pavilion and peruse those shelves and see what's new and what's different. And we're also on the lookout for delicious treats because there are usually some really, really cool things in these gift shops that you're not gonna find anywhere else in Disney World and possibly not anywhere else in America. In the past, we found spirited chocolates, meaning spiked chocolates from Plaza de los Amigos in the Mexico Pavilion, varieties of Kit Kat flavors from Mitsukoshi Department Store in the Japan Pavilion, coffee crisps from the Northwest Mercantile in the Canada Pavilion, which Bria says she gets every single time she's in Epcot, and even even hangover lozenges from the tea caddy in the UK pavilion. Not really sure if that counts as a treat, but hey, might still be nice to know if you're partaking around the showcase. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. But the gift shop that tends to feature the most unique snack offerings inside World Showcase is the House of Good Fortune. In this, what we call it HOGF, HOGF, you're gonna find things like teas and mochis and interesting potato chip flavors that you're not typically gonna find in the Wally World aisles. Like we tried the cherry blossom wine rice chip or the peach craft beer flavor chips, lots of cool stuff. But recently we stumbled upon that really interesting Squishmallow situation. The package includes six jumbo gummies with apple, cherry, peach, pineapple, raspberry, and watermelon flavors. And as far as gummies go, they're fun, but pretty basic, but your kid's gonna love them regardless because they're Squishmallow shaped. Now, the main point I'm trying to make here, even if you don't want a Squishmallow gummy, is that you don't wanna skip out on the gift shop snacks around World Showcase when you're in pursuit of something fun and unique to try, maybe some cool gifts to take home, because your new favorite international treat might be hiding out in one of these souvenir shelves. Now let's head over to France, because whenever we talk about La Artisan de Glace, we usually default to our all-time favorites, the brioche pressed ice cream sandwich and that ice cream martini. And before you ask, yes, both of these things are still amazing and still our favorite treats to order here. But what we don't talk about nearly as often, though we really should, 
is the cafe glass that you can get at this little France Pavilion parlor. This is made of an iced cappuccino, your choice of ice cream and whipped cream topped off with caramel sauce. Now, for all my pitch black coffee drinkers out there, this is not gonna be your go-to choice because it's definitely a sweet, sweet coffee combo. However, the ice cream does help brighten the flavor against the cappuccino flavor, and it's a great option for those who enjoy a sweeter, creamy coffee as opposed to a stronger, straight up coffee. Ah, uh, the next is one of my very, very favorites, and we don't talk about it very much here because it keeps coming and going and coming and going. It's not a reliable snack, I would say. It's kind of finicky, and it's the gingerbread salted caramel cookie sandwich at Caramel Kusha. Now, don't worry, because if that one's not there, they usually replace it with the snickerdoodle salted caramel cookie sandwich. So there's gonna be something there that's going to be absolutely incredible, whether it's gingerbread or snickerdoodle, not sure. So these treats are two soft, light, and fluffy cookies. When it's gingerbread, they're gingerbread cookies. When it's snickerdoodle, they're snickerdoodle. And it's held together with a thick buttercream icing with Werther's caramel inside. So it's hard to go wrong with that. Now focusing in on the gingerbread version, it was originally just a seasonal offering just for the holidays. But then due to its popularity, it started hanging out as a permanent offering starting in 2022. Until suddenly it disappeared on us again in May, which was not cool. And then the gingerbread cookie sandwich came back for the holidays and then it went away again and then snickerdoodle came in so you're getting the vibe right it's unreliable but something should be there when you're there that has the same vibe now if you come back to caramel kusha for some reason the gingerbread cookie sandwich isn't there and that's the one you wanted we do have a copycat recipe of it on our dfb site so if you want to try making it at home instead i'll link that post down in the description for you now, how about some Disney Springs snacks? We are tired of gatekeeping. There are so many good treats and eats waiting to be discovered at Disney Springs. And you don't even have to pay a billion dollars to get a ticket to go there, it's free. But I'm gonna tell you about some of the most underrated ones, as well as fill you in on a little secret tip that'll help you possibly get a new popular treat for free. Okay, loaded fries at Splitsville. You may have heard about the loaded fries from Regal Eagle Smokehouse in Epcot, because we talk about it all the time, or the ones at Flame Tree Barbecue in Animal Kingdom. Again, my birthday fries, my favorite. But have you ever heard about the loaded fries hiding out inside the Disney Springs bowling alley? Splitsville's loaded fries are French fries smothered with queso blanco, bacon, ranch, scallions, and probably lots of love. We really do adore these fries. They are savory and flavorful and big enough to split with friends if you really want to, all for 13 bucks. It's a great deal. Next, we've got something brand new, the cookies at the cookie bar at Summer House on the Lake. These are new, exciting, and very popular, but what many folks don't know about these cookies is that there might be a way you can get one for free. If you dine at Summer House on the Lake while wearing a birthday celebration button, which you can pick up for free at one of Disney's guest relations offices or at the front desk of your Disney resort, then you might receive a complimentary cookie at the end of your meal. We do have to warn you that it's not guaranteed you'll get any freebies during your meal here, but you might just get lucky like we did and experience that little bit of extra birthday magic that Disney's so well known for. For. Please don't wear the birthday pin if it's not your birthday though. That's just weird. Like, and don't get stuff for free if it's not your birthday. Anyway, don't forget to look out for even more birthday freebies around Disney Springs. You can get free cupcakes at Sprinkles if you're a rewards member, free Starbucks drinks, even free Sephora samples. Don't eat those. And then sometimes Earl of Sandwich, if you are a rewards member or loyalty member, will have free stuff on your birthday as well. And when you're traveling to Disney World for vacation, your certain dietary restrictions cannot take a back seat, obviously. And that can make things pretty tricky when you're wanting to enjoy sweets and treats alongside the rest of your group. Fortunately, the Disney parks have been a whole lot better about accommodating certain dietary restrictions, but you may not find accommodations nearly as abundant inside Disney Springs as they are at the parks, which is why we are so glad that Aaron McKenna's exists inside Disney Springs. Aaron McKenna's Bakery NYC is a fairly small, quick service little restaurant bakery that specializes in sweets and treats made to serve underserved people with gluten, dairy, egg, and soy sensitivities. Quote unquote, their goal is to make eating vegan and gluten free fun and delicious. During our last visit, we really enjoyed items like the brownie bomb cupcake and the vanilla dipped cookie sandwich. That's always been my favorite. But there's literally so much to choose from here, including options like donuts and bagels and cakes and more. And there's seasonal stuff that comes around. The best part about these desserts, though, the recipes have been created to feel and taste like regular treats instead of treats modified to be allergy friendly. You're going to love it. Your kids with allergies are going to love it. Definitely put this on your list. 
Now, how about Disney Hotel Eats that might be worth the trip alone? There are some Disney Resort snacks that are good, but not necessarily worth the extra trip out to the hotel if you're not already staying there. And then there are the resort snacks that may absolutely 110% be worth the extra trip for you. So here are the resort snacks that we think are worth the extra travel time, especially if you've got a break day factored into your trip already. First, the charcuterie flatbread at Geyser Point Bar and Grill. Now, y'all, Geyser Point over at Wilderness Lodge is worth the visit for the whole package. It's got the eats, it's got the drinks, it's got the scenic outdoor views. But if you're looking for something savory and satisfying, let me suggest one of the bar's newest lounge bite options, the charcuterie flatbread. This is topped with salami and brisket, chorizo, bacon, and smoked Gouda beer cheese. This flatbread has a ton of flavor with a sizable but not overbearing portion of meat. From the tender brisket to the crispy, salty bacon and spiced salami, this is definitely for those meat eaters. The arugula and shallots sprinkled into the mix add a fresh pop to the dish that brightens it up, and the balsamic glaze also brings a touch of sweetness for another flavorful variety. And then there's the smoked Gouda beer cheese, which is a little bit nutty, aren't we all, and very creamy, helping to make this flatbread into even more of a decadent dish. Now this is an oldie and a goodie that not a lot of people know about, the Key Lime Swirl at Goods Food To Go. Old Key West Resort is kinda out in the boonies and away from everything else, aside from Disney Springs where it's only a boat ride away. But the Old Key West Quick Service, Goods Food To Go, is harboring one of the best Dole Whip flavors of all time, the Key Lime Swirl, which Bria, my script writer, as you know, personally thinks knocks the typically pineapple flavor out of the water. And she says she's not taking further questions at this time, but I have some questions. Questions. Anyway, the key lime swirl is Dole Whip lime and vanilla soft serve swirled together then topped off with graham cracker crumbs. It's a refreshing snack for sure, but it would be nice if that graham cracker was a little more prominent just so this treat could taste even more like a real key lime pie. The graham crackers on top are shredded so fine that they don't add much texture to this swirl, but they also don't run the risk of getting overly soggy either, so pros and cons. If you like a punch of tartness to go along with your classic vanilla ice cream, then this is the treat for you. Lime is probably one of my favorite Dole Whip flavors. Sorry, Bria. But if you want to skip out on the vanilla soft serve altogether, you can always just ask for the Key Lime Dole Whip straight up for 100% tang and no creamy sweet vanilla to hold back that pucker-worthy flavor. Next on our list of resort eats are the elevated grab-and-go offerings at Fuel. What? What's that? Never heard of Fuel before? Well, it's a good thing you're here then. Fuel is a grab-and-go market over on the dolphin side of Walt Disney World's Swan and Dolphin Hotels. But this isn't just your standard grab-and-go location where you're only going to find string cheese and orange juice. These are literally the first two things that came to the top of my mind when thinking about grab-and-go items, which I think says a lot about me as a person. Anyway, at Fuel, you're also going to find a full coffee and espresso bar, an assortment of bakery items like key lime bars, madelines, fresh fruit tarts, moon pies, etc., etc. Yes, I said moon pies. Unique sandwiches like Bon me, spicy chicken cordon bleu, grilled pimento cheese, and ham and jam. And the big winner here, a self-serve Froyo station featuring self-serve pineapple Dole Whip too, which you can doll up with your choice of whatever toppings you want to add straight from the toppings bar. And yes, this is the only place you're going to get self-serve Dole Whip anywhere in Disney World right now. Remember way back in the day when they had it at Captain Cook's and Captain Cook's was 24 hours, so you could go get Dole Whip at like three o'clock in the morning? Yeah, that doesn't exist anymore. They took that soft-serve Dole Whip out when they revamped the whole restaurant. So this is the only place now that you can get self-serve Dole Whip on Disney World property right Right over there at Fuel at the Dolphin. Oh, and for any of you Dr. Pepper fans out there, you're not going to find Dr. Pepper inside the Disney parks or at the Disney resorts either, since Dr. Pepper's owned by the Dr. Pepper Snapple Group and not Coke, which is the only thing they're allowed to sell in the Disney properties. But because Swan and Dolphin aren't owned by Disney, they're owned by Marriott, you can find bottles of Dr. Pepper at Fuel. So I guess it's a good thing these hotels are still within walking distance of Hollywood Studios and Epcot, because now you can walk over and stock up. Or you can bring your own Dr. Pepper bottles from home or get them at a nearby grocery store. Either way, you don't have to worry about going Dr. Pepperless all trip long, I promise. 
Now, the Nyala Brownie is the queen of brownies in Disney World right now, and you can find her royal icingness at the Mara Quick Service in Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge. One look at this thing and you'll understand why she deserves such a majestic title. This is basically the evolution of the peanut butter brownie from the Mara way back in the day. If you guys have been watching these videos for a really long time, they used to have a big circular brownie with tons of peanut butter icing on top. And then that sort of evolved into this, the Nyala Brownie which is Mickey shaped peanut butter buttercream and vanilla buttercream on it. So is it as much of that sort of cookie dough-esque peanut butter icing that it used to have? No, not as much, but hey, I'll take what I can get. Plus those buttercream layers are super thick and I love that. And a lot of Disney World brownies can be kind of dry. This is not, this is actually a very, very, very well, I don't wanna say underbaked brownie, but my experience with it has been that it's been nice and moist and dense, a really good brownie, kind of like, you know, my favorite Casey's Corner brownie. <laughs> Anyway, is this brownie worth the trek out to Animal Kingdom Lodge? Well, I think so and have done so, but snacks are like a top priority experience for me. If you're not already staying at Animal Kingdom Lodge, it is quite a trek to get over there just to pick up a dessert, but hey, you could also go over to Animal Kingdom Lodge to check out the animals, walk around this gorgeous resort. Maybe you wanna have dinner at Jiko or Sanaa, you wanna go get the bread service at the Sanaa Lounge and then pop into the Mara to pick up one of these to eat later. I don't know, maybe for breakfast. Anyway, you get it. There's lots of reasons to go to Animal Kingdom Lodge and the Nyala Brownie is just one of them. Next up, here are a few Hollywood Studios snacks that you're forgetting about. I've definitely got my tried and true Hollywood Studios snack staples that I keep on running back to, like the Wookie Cookie at Backlot Express, the Tachos at Woody's Lunchbox, and that Ronto Rabbit Ronto Roasters, especially the breakfast one, it's the best. But I've got some other hidden gem snacks hiding on the menus of this park, and in order to get your hands on one of these, you're gonna have to take on a DFB snack hack. Okay, first up, we're gonna talk about the Mint Chocolate Chip Cheesecake at ABC Commissary. Yes, you heard me right. If you are wanting a sweet treat after your meal of shrimp tacos or buffalo chicken grilled cheese, then you might wanna consider the mint chocolate chip cheesecake. I know, it sounds weird, right? This dessert is a chocolate cheesecake topped with dark chocolate ganache and whipped mint chocolate chip cream. So the mint flavor is actually in the whipped cream and not in the cheesecake itself. So very light, not gonna hit you over the head with that mint flavor. But the best part of this treat is the chocolatey crust layered on the bottom. Basically, this dessert is like a thin mint cookie that's thicker and creamier and doesn't come in a box that's sold outside your local supermarket. The temptation suckers us in every single time, every time. So if you're a fan of mint chocolate cheesecake combinations that are reminiscent of Girl Scout season, then you're in for a real nice surprise with this one. And guess who's back in my good graces again? Yep, the carrot cake cookie has made its return to my list. So carrot cake cookie, this has been in existence in Hollywood Studios for a bajillion years. They first sold it over at Writer's Stop. If y'all remember Writer's Stop, there's a whole lore to that. We will talk about it another time. Then it moved over to Sweet Spells, which don't worry, it doesn't exist anymore. And then it moved over to Trolley Car Cafe. That's where you can get it now. Now the carrot cake cookie is kind of trying to be a whoopie pie with two layers of carrot cake, quote unquote cookies, but they're, it's cake and generous amounts of cream cheese frosting sandwiched between these two cake-like carrot cake cookies. Now, last year I avoided talking about this one because despite many, many years of love and devotion to it, it let me down. I got a carrot cake cookie at Trolley Car Cafe and I was super excited to eat it. So I dove right in and it was really, you know, they serve them cold. They serve them out of the fridge and the icing was so gummy. It just felt old and it didn't taste good anymore. I didn't like it. It didn't like the texture. So I was like, you know, I'm going to take this off of my recommended list for a little while because it just wasn't a good experience for me. And I'm not going to recommend it if, if I don't even want to get it. Last week, I went back to Hollywood Studios and you know, we know what we do around here. Even if we don't love something at one time, we will keep trying it. We will keep going back to a restaurant we didn't love the first time to see if it changes. We'll see if the ingredients change or if the chef changes or if, you know, the menu changes. Anyway, you get it. That's why we keep going back to these places. But got the carrot cake cookie again and... Through a series of events, I couldn't dive right into it immediately. I had to kind of leave it sitting in the car 
<laughs> for a little while while I went and did something else. Now, while it sat in the car in Florida, it warmed up a little bit. So that is what I have realized is the key to this thing being delicious again. Don't eat it right out of the fridge. Let it warm up a little bit and kind of let it sit out and thaw a little bit for you because then that icing is going to be the right texture. The cake is going to be that super moist, not kind of as dense as it is when it's really cold from the fridge. Now, usually I like my cake cold from the fridge. I eat birthday cake from the fridge for breakfast. I love it. But in this particular case, it does get kind of gummy if you eat it straight out of the fridge. So just let it sit and warm up a little bit and then it's going to be absolutely perfect especially if that icing is even a little bit melty. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. It was amazing. Now, the moral of this story, just because a Disney treat has been eschewed in the past, doesn't mean it's gonna stay that way. But I know that's hard to keep track of when there are literally hundreds of snacks out there that you've got to attempt to learn about before your big Disney World trip takes place. So that's why we keep a list of our updated reviews for you via the DFB Guide Everything Bundle. All the DFB digital guidebooks featured in the Everything Bundle are going to fill you in on our latest recommendations and experiences that we've had with Disney dining and snacking. And they're going to give you tons of tips to help you secure dining reservations and save money on food and track down the best snacks. You can find our DFB Everything Bundle over on the dfbstore.com website. Just be sure to type in code YouTube so you can get an even bigger discount on your total purchase. And remember, these books are 100% guaranteed. If you don't like them, we will give you your money back, no questions asked. We don't want you to be unhappy. <laughs> and you don't want you to be unhappy. And our next snack in Hollywood Studios, the bacon mac and cheese at Fairfax Fair. So in our last 2024 snack video, we mentioned those tasty waffle bowl varieties you can pick up from Fairfax Fair, where you've got a bunch of really, really yummy mashed potatoes with a bunch of different toppings. Awesome. But if you're looking for something a whole lot more cheesy, you might want to grab the bacon mac and cheese that's available here instead, or as well. This specialty dish is a house-made mac with beer cheese, bacon, and breadcrumbs. And the beer cheese is super creamy, but it doesn't have a powerful beer taste at all. Instead, we describe it as almost a bread-like flavor, very rich and smooth. You got a little bit of that yeastiness there, but not too much. Now, while I do wish this was more of a traditional baked mac and cheese, so I could get some of that added crunchy and toasty cheese with each of those elbow noodles, sometimes this type of version means it's going to be creamier because those baked ones can sometimes get really dried out. Now, the bacon and breadcrumbs help add a little crispiness to this otherwise softer bowl. The breadcrumbs are light and herby and the bacon is nice and salty, adding that great combo of flavors all around. At 11 bucks, this bacon mac and cheese is steep for a snack, but you will get a good portion of rich mac and cheese for that price point. Could be very shareable as a snack as well. Okay, you know what? I still don't think a part two covered everything I wanna talk about when it comes to Disney World snacks in 2024. So be on the lookout for even more snack videos to come. And don't forget to download our free best snacks of 2024 guide over at disneyfoodblog.com slash best snacks. Did I mention it's free? It's totally free. Thanks for listening everyone and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog and we'll see you real soon.